doing something about climate change and doing something about inequality and making sure that uh, you know, women are getting the same opportunities as men and fighting against <laughs> there you go and, 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 and fighting against the forces of discrimination and uh, tribalism and racism but the single most important thing that I want to focus on is lifting up and identifying and working with and training the next generation of leadership. Not just in the United States, but all around the world. Uh, and that's really the central goal of our foundation. It's going to be based in Chicago, my hometown, but we want to have projects, programs, partnerships, and digital networks everywhere. And I'm not just lending my name to the foundation, I'm going to be an active part of it. Uh, this year I've already met with young people like yourselves in Germany, in Indonesia, in Brazil, uh, and then we had our first ever Obama Foundation Summit in Chicago. And I don't want to speak uh, too long because I want to spend most of our time on questions uh, and Anshul is going to help to moderate it. But I, I did want to mention the reason I thought it was so important to do something in India. Uh, you've got the largest population of young people in the world. Uh, and that's a lot, so we might as well start big. Um, we've already identified some remarkable young leaders who are doing extraordinary things here in India. Uh, authors, athletes, artists, entrepreneurs, civic leaders from all across the country. We've got activists who are working on everything from education to gender equality to climate change. Uh, a couple of young leaders were re recently with us in Chicago, and I just want to acknowledge them. Uh, Trisha Shetty started, where's, where is she? There she is. Did you have fun in Chicago? Oh, see there, she, now, I didn't call on her to say that, but thank you. But Trisha uh, started an organization called She Says, aimed at educating and empowering men and women to take action against sexual abuse. Uh, also joining us in Chicago was uh, Sanchana Krishnan, uh, who works with communities to destigmatize mental health issues through the power of personal storytelling. Where's, uh, is, there you are, there you are. Uh, and here in India, we've got young leaders like uh, Kuldeep uh, Dantewadia, who's building, where, where's uh, Kuldeep? There he is. He's building this country's first, what he calls, solve squad of 17,500 young people so far who are driving change at the local level all across India. So the point is, the point is, is that th these young people are already showing the power that anybody has if they take the initiative and have the courage, as Anshul said, to drive change, to make a difference. And there have never been more powerful, more accessible tools for each of you to make a difference than there are today. Uh, and in fact, I, I would argue, and I mentioned this in my speech earlier this morning, there's never been a better time to be a young person. I mean, it's always good being young, by the way. <laughs> but uh, if you think about it, if you had to choose a moment in history in which you could be born, and you didn't know ahead of time who you were going to be, you didn't know what your status would be, you didn't know whether you were going to be male, female, Indian, or American, you didn't know whether you were going to be uh, gay, straight, you didn't know whether you, you were going to be rich or poor, what caste you might be a member of, what religion. So you, you're just a human and you had to choose when to be born, you choose now. Because as, as troubled as our politics are, as, as difficult as the world can, can seem when you're watching uh, the newscasts, the fact is that over the past hundred years we've come from a world where only a small fraction of women could vote to a world where almost every woman can. Since 1950 the global average life expectancy has grown by more than 20 years. Since 1990, I mean, that's not that long ago. I, I was, 
I was in law school in 1990. We've cut extreme poverty and childhood mortality in half. Much of that, by the way, in India and China. Since 2000, we've evolved from a world without marriage equality to one in which it's a reality in more than two dozen countries. The fact is the world has never been healthier. It has never been wealthier. And despite terrible conflicts that are still taking place around the world and, and in, in, um, remarkable cruelty and suffering, um, the world is actually less violent and more tolerant than it's ever been. Fewer people are dying young. More people are living not only longer but better. More girls are attending school. More adults can read. More children have the vaccines that they need. And, and the point is, is that none of this happened just because of luck. It happened because people chose to make it happen. And many of those people, working over the course of many years, uh, started without power or wealth or title. And many of them were extraordinarily young, just like you. I, I always have to remind people that when you think of somebody like Dr. Martin Luther King, who, who did so much in our country, he was 24, 25 years old when he began uh, as an activist in Montgomery, Alabama, to try to desegregate uh, the South. And he started in small steps, and it was only a few years later where he won the Nobel Prize and would help to revolutionize America. But it wasn't just Dr. King, it was all these young people around him who were just like us. You know, they had their flaws, they had their problems uh, in our human story. So that's, that's the legacy that is available to you should you choose to grab it. That should inspire each of you to keep pushing for progress in whatever field you're in and whatever communities that you live in, knowing that your efforts matter. Uh, and I hope uh, that all of you stay engaged after this session uh, and, and uh, are prepared to, to work with each other and work with us um, and let other young leaders know about uh, how we can continue to build up a community of change around the world. Uh, and that way, uh, next time I come back to India, uh, you guys will be here waiting for me and you can tell me all the amazing progress that you've already made. All right? Okay, so enough talk. Let's, uh, we're going to get Ancho back out here. Here he is. I said, by the way, that uh, I thought he was the sharpest dresser of any introducer that I've had. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good outfit. Um, I can't get away with it. <laughs> it's a little too hip for me. But we're going to sit here. We're going to use these mics. Yes. Okay. And, and sometimes I may stand up just because I've been sitting a lot and I'm going to have a long flight to Paris right after this, so uh, don't mind me. Uh, should I start? Or yeah. Okay. So uh, there aren't any big ground rules on this. This is just a conversation. Uh, the only rules are that uh, if I call on you, you have to stand up, if you can, and introduce yourself so that people know who you are. Um, tell us a little bit but not too long, <laughs> about what you're doing. And uh, the only other rule is we're going to go uh, boy, girl, boy, girl, because sometimes men talk too much. <laughs> so that way, that way we, can, we can assure ourselves that uh, there's parity and equality, because we have to model the kind of world that we want. All right, we're going to start with you, because you had your hand up first. And we've got microphones so that... Uh, uh, everybody else can hear you. Go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and yes. thank you for giving us a beautiful opportunity to come and speak to you about what we are doing in our field work and how we can contribute to your vision of a global community. Okay. Sir, my name is Preeti Khanna. I'm mm -hmm. a Delhi University student. I'm a PhD scholar, and I'm currently working on nutrition and mental health of adolescents. Uh -huh. So my question to you is, sir, that what is your vision of a global health community and how can we as young leaders contribute towards it? Well, that's, Thank a, you. that's a great question and, and I suspect you know more of the answers than I do. Uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, offer a, a, a general view on, on what I've learned during the course of my presidency. Um, 
the first point is that if you have a healthy community, particularly starting with healthy children, that's going to be one of the greatest indicators of overall development for a country. So uh, it, it is not only good for the individual uh, that there's a public health infrastructure that is promoting uh, people's well-being, but it's also good economic policy. And what I've learned is that it starts with young people because young people are naturally healthy if people don't screw them up. Um, and, the, uh, and the more that you can emphasize prevention, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, if, you, if you think about advanced economies, some of the progress that has been made has to do with the marvels of technology and science. Uh, and you know, thankfully, because of things like vaccines and uh, other discoveries, we can cure diseases that in the past we could not cure. Uh, but probably the single biggest contributor, for example, to uh, the health and longevity of people in more advanced countries was things, were things like clean drinking water and proper ways of eliminating waste and, and, and sewage systems. Uh, because what those things did was prevent diseases from taking root in the first place. So, um, obviously, there are going to be differences in the communities, uh, and even within countries, much less between countries. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert on what are some of the most important public health issues in India, but I think it's fair to say that we, we, we can anticipate that uh, basic prenatal care for mothers, that's a universal investment that when you make pays huge dividends. Uh, children's brains develop in the womb and then in the earliest stages of life. And if you've made that investment early, then typically they're going to do much better. Having the sorts of infrastructure uh, uh, that I described around clean drinking water, and since we're in Delhi, I have to mention clean air. Uh, that, I think, is a big and important investment. Um, Basic things like vaccinations uh, uh, to, to prevent uh, diseases that in many parts of the world have already been entirely cured. Those are cheap, modest efforts that, uh, th that we can provide. Um, and then, I, I think, nutrition. And, and just making sure that not only do people have enough to eat, but that they have enough variety in their diets. Uh, and, and the interesting thing when it comes to nutrition is that uh, for developing countries, my hope would be that they uh, leapfrog some of the bad habits that have developed in advanced countries around processed foods and take advantage of uh, locally grown, more natural products, which actually can then benefit farmers, 